Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate one of the unique features of the XB802.15.4 OEM module and adapters. This feature is called Direct I.O. Line Passing, or in other words, the ability to toggle the state of a digital input on a transmitting radio and in turn have the same pin on one or more receiving radios toggle their state to match. This feature can be very useful to wirelessly control relays or other switched equipment. In my demonstration today, I will be using two XB802.15.4 radios on XBIB interface boards and one XB802.15.4 digital I.O. adapter. I'm going to be connecting a toggle switch to one of the radios on the interface board and I will connect an LED on the second interface board. And finally, I'm going to be connecting a small battery-powered light bulb on the XB802.15.4 digital I.O. adapter. My intention is to have the LED and the light bulb turn on when I flip the switch connected to the transmitting radio. Okay, to get started we need to ensure that all three radios are communicating with each other by ensuring that they're on the same PAN ID and channel. So the first parameters we're going to set, um, and right now I'm going to do the base radio first, uh, is the channel and PAN ID. So we're going to set the channel to F and the PAN ID to 1238. Now, we don't necessarily have to change these. We can leave out default, but here in the Digi offices, we've got so many radios running that I need to put myself on a unique PAN ID so that I don't get interference with other radios. And uh, next thing we're going to do is go down to the destination low address, and I'm going to set this to FFFF. Okay, this is the broadcast address, and will allow the space radio to transmit to my other two radios. Okay, once I have that address set, I'm going to come down to the digital I.O. section and select one of my general purpose digital inputs, uh, outputs as a digital input. And for this exercise, I've chosen D4, and I'm going to set D4 as a digital input, which is setting 3. Okay. Next, we need to set the change detect parameter. This is the IC parameter. And this is a bit mask that's used by the radio to determine which pins to monitor for a change of state. Uh, the value is entered as a hexadecimal value where bit 1 represents digital input output 0 and bit 2 represents digital input output 1, etc. So to set change detect for D4 um, would be binary 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, which one converted to hexadecimal is 10. So let's go ahead and set that to 10. Okay. Now this change detect is sufficient to send a packet to the other modules to change the state of their digital input outputs. But what if there happens to be interference while that information is being transmitted? In that situation, it is possible that the state change will not occur. To increase the reliability, we can also take a sample rate at a prescribed rate to act as a backup to our change detect. This way, if for some reason our packet generated by the change detect is not received, the changed will be received on one of the subsequent sample rate packets. The sample rate is set using the IR parameter. In this example, we're going to set our sample rate to one second. The sample rate is set in one millisecond increments and is represented hexadecimally. So to set this value to one second, we need to, that's the equivalent of 1,000 milliseconds, which uh, when converted to hex is 3E8. So we go ahead and set that to 3E8. And that's all we need on the base radio. So we'll go ahead and write these values. And after a few seconds, uh, we'll, we can go ahead and read the radio back and make sure that those settings are, in fact, saved. Okay, and as we read it back, we notice that all the values that we have changed from the default are now highlighted in blue. Now we're ready to set our parameters on our two receiving modules. And uh, they're going to be set exactly the same way, so we can just uh, show you with one example here. Um, on this module, we're going to, on these modules, we're going to also set our channel to channel F and our PAN ID to 1238. Uh, we can go ahead and just leave our addressing as is with the default settings. And the next setting that we need to change is our D4. So because that we use D4 on the transmitting module, we also need to use D4 on our receiving modules. And on these, instead of setting them as a digital input, we're going to set them as a digital output. 
and we can either have them be default as low or high. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select 4, which is digital output low on both modules. And the next thing we need to do is um, set up our uh, IA parameter, which is under this IO line passing folder. This parameter, the IA, tells our module which transmitting modules it should respond to. We can either use the MY value, source address, 16-bit source address of the transmitting module if we want it just to listen to one radio, or we can set this to FFFF if we want to have it respond to any radio. So for our example here, I'm going to set this to FFFF. And so that's it on the receiving modules. Our modules are now set and we're ready to test our digital I.O. line passing. Okay, now we're going to put it all together and see how this works. So I've got my three devices on the desktop here. Um, on this first interface board, I've got an XB module set up as my base unit. I've got a switch that has one lead connected to ground and the other lead is connected to the D4 pin, which is pin 11 on the module. On the second interface board, I've got an LED connected to ground on one side and to the D4 digital output on the other side. And then finally, I've got my battery-powered light bulb that goes, the battery positively goes to the breadboard, which then in turn goes over to my light. And then the light goes over to the pin one of the digital I.O. adapter, um, which is controlled by D4, and then the ground lead of the digital I.O. adapter over here is going back to the breadboard, which goes to the negative lead of the batteries. Now I uh, take my base unit and right now it is pulled to ground. I flip the switch which then pulls it high and the light bulb and the LED both go on. I pull it back to ground and the state of the two remote units goes low and the light goes out. So in this fashion I'm able to control the lights and uh, in like fashion I could control uh, a relay or any other electrical equipment. This final slide shows uh, all the settings of our three modules. Um, we have on the base unit, DL set to FFFF, D4 is set to 3, or digital input, IC is set to hex 10, which is a, a bit mask enabling D4 to be sampled. The sample rate, IR, is set to 3E8, which is once a second. And on our remote units, we have D4 set to 4, which is digital output low, and the IA set to FFFF, which instructs the module to listen to instructions from any other module. The PAN ID and channel must be the same on all modules for this to work, and all other parameters should be left at factory defaults. Thank you for watching, and if you have any other questions on this project or others, please contact Digi Technical Support.